worried about tomorrow and what the future holds. Your mind is filled with questions as you face the unknown. You spent so many sleepless nights trying to work it out. Worry has consumed your faith with all its fear and Father, we just thank you for the opportunity we have to join you as one, Lord, and we lift you up and magnify you and thank you for all that you have done for us, Lord. And I just thank you for the song we heard, because you are worthy, Lord, and we thank you for that. I just pray you open our hearts and our minds to receive your word this day, Lord, that we can be pleasing in your sight, Lord, that we'll have no excuse on that judgment day, for we will not, because we've heard your word, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We're going to start over in Jonah. We're going to jump around a little bit. In Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. How many remembers the story of Jonah? Getting swallowed by the whale. And they say that can't happen, but they've proved it along the way it can happen. All things are possible with God. All things. Okay? And he says, verse 1, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. And I believe we're talking about the United States of America right now, for the wickedness of the world of the United States has come up to God. It's time for us to open our eyes. It's time for us to stand up. It's time for us to be counted. Counted what? With the righteous. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing in them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Where are we at? We're in the world. How many have neighbors and friends? How many have neighbors and friends you know that might not be going to heaven? Are you sharing the love of Jesus with them? Or are you allowing your light so shine that they can see a difference in your life? If there's no difference in your life, why would they want what we have? There has to be a difference. And that difference is what? Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit that lives within us. We have the peace because He lives within us. Are we perfect? In God's eyes you are. If you're a child of the King and you're striving to be what you've been called to do, be a witness in a lost world. He will use even the little babies 
You ever notice how when the little baby comes in, everybody puts a smile on their face and they want to hold a baby? But I don't like sharing, but that's okay. But isn't it awesome? Is that not what we're supposed to be as believers in Jesus Christ? Excited? Excited about what God is doing and how God is working? God works in mysterious ways and He wants to use us to do that. In Matthew chapter 16, verse chapter 16, verse 1. It says, And the uh, Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempted, desiring him that he would show them a sign from heaven. And you know what he told them? He says, You've already got a sign from heaven, was Jonah. Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights, and he went to Nineveh, and there was a great revival. People of the United States of America needs a great revival, and I pray that God will raise up uh, Jonah at that point in time, in this point in time, that will preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our world's falling apart from the top, clear down to the bottom. And the Bible says in the last days, men will be lovers of pleasures more than they are lovers of God. The churches should be packed right now. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you know that we need to assemble together as one to lift up the lost in this world. And per some chance, they might have the opportunity to see Jesus in us. And if they can't see Him in us, what do we have to offer? We have nothing to offer, but we have to, what to offer? We have Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that died for me when I was yet in sin. He died for me. And he gave his life for me and he hung upon the cross for each and every one of us. That is love. How much do we love others? How much do we love God? Do we even know ourselves? And I'm telling you what, if you really want to know yourself, just get a hammer and whoop yourself on the thumb and see what comes out of that mouth. See if it's praises and thanksgiving to God. We can praise Him just as well with a, with a mashed thumb as we can cursing the world, cursing our friends, cursing others. Who are you? We're a child of the King. If you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord, Lord and Savior, you should have the biggest smile on your face that this world has to offer. Why? Because we know that Jesus Christ sits on the throne and we know that last day we're going to hear them great words that I love. Well done, my good and faithful servant. We are His servant. When we accept Jesus Christ, He didn't put us on the throne. We are His servants. And He says, go, tell, be what God has called us to be, a witness. Are you doing what he's called you to do? Do you have the peace that passes all understanding Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday? We know you do on a Sunday. We come and we have a peace. Well, I'm in the house of the Lord. No, we're in his presence 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Only you know what goes on behind closed doors. And God knows too. And the Holy Spirit knows. And Jesus knows. And so, so if you think you got the market cornered, say, but nobody knows. I'm telling you what. God does. God knows your heart. He knows your thoughts. He knows where you're at right now. And maybe not everybody's here. Some of you might be out fishing. I heard there was the fish were biting. Some of you might have been out hunting. Well, we, we heard them, but we didn't see any. Some of you might be in church today. I say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I come to be refreshed for another week to come. And each week is worse than the week before. We are blessed to be in a, a location where we're not going through all this chaos. But can it happen here? It sure can. We pray that God will work in people's lives and help them to realize they need a change in their lives. When we take our eyes off Jesus and we start putting them onto the world, into the world, we can be a part of the chaos. Never once he told us to do that. He said, 
pray, pray, love, and be a witness in a lost world. Verse 5, it says, And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Isn't it strange sometimes we forget about the things that are important and put our thing, mind on things that are not important? How many needs another meal today? How many had enough through the week that you don't need one today? Maybe never, everyone, maybe not, had sat down to a big old turkey and ham and and all kind of pies and all that. But we did. And I guarantee you, we had more than one plate. We had more than we needed. Had more dessert than I needed. And I didn't even have to eat supper. I was still full. We are blessed and highly favored of the Lord. It says, and we always worry about bread. We don't need to worry about bread. God said, I'll take care of all your needs. He'll put bread on the table. How many times have you had no way to, I don't know what I'm going to do, and somebody comes knocks on the door. Hey, I just felt led to bring you food over. Now, you might not have, but you maybe you haven't been down that far down the road, but a lot of people have been down that far down the road, and God has supplied their need when they needed it. Awesome what God can do if we only allow Him to do so. And he says, a real point of the matter here is, is, then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. A leaven, the yeast. Man, they're so messed up, they got so much yeast in them, they're trying to blow out everywhere. They're trying to kill the Christians. They're trying to do everything that they're not supposed to do. Too much yeast in them. And you take a little piece of, you mix your bread up and leave the least yeast out. What do you got? You got it. Little old, tiny thing. You throw that yeast into it, what do you have? You got a big old bread. And if you put too much in it, I don't know what happens. I don't cook. But if you put too much in it, what happens? It probably overgoes. And it becomes fluffy and airy. People, we are fluffy and we got a lot of air in us. But it's not in line with the Word of God. It says, I have word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. His word have we hid in our hearts that we can be a witness in the lost world. We are not full of air. Let me tell you about Jesus. And they'll say, well, let me watch your walk. Well, no, don't do that. Just let me tell you about Jesus. No, it takes the whole lump of bread to do what God has called us to do, to be the witness. It takes our total being of who we are and our submission to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and it's no longer I but Christ that lives within me so many times well he's all puffed up that's because Christ is living in me and I'm doing what he's called me to do and I have peace when things fall apart around you what do you do? pray who works it out? he does and he works it out in mysterious ways and we call them blessings man God blessed me again right on time has anybody been blessed by God right on time? All right. About half of us, that's awesome. I'm telling the other half, get ready. Put your eyes upon Jesus, and you're going to get the same thing too. You're going to see Him at work in your life because He loves each and every one of us so much He stretched forth His hands and died for us. If we was the only person on the face of the earth, He died for us. He loves us that much. And he says in verse 7, he says, And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Because they've taken their eyes off of what it's all about. Man, if you come on a Sunday and we're having a carry-in, you don't have no bread, are you going to be kicked out? No. We're going to have a fellowship. We're going to have a good time. Family with family, a Christian family of love, and we're going to encourage one or another and lift each other up. And that's what God's saying. It has nothing to do with the bread. He says in verse 8, Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason among yourselves? Because ye have brought no bread. He's chastening the disciples. Big deal. You didn't bring no bread. What's the problem here? Have we not? Have you not seen me 
make man out of nothing. He took care of them. He supplied their needs. He, he, made, he took a few fish and fed 5,000. He, he can meet the needs that we have. Well, that was then and this is now. No, time was made for man, not for God. God's on my presence. He's there. He was there yesterday, today, and forever. He knows. His time is not like our time. How many feel like you're real old? Compared to what? To the earth? You're always old. You was old when you was born. Gee. Okay. God loves us so much that he'll make a way out of no way. Since Terry raised his hand, didn't God make a way out of no way? Oh, yes. Amen. God will make a way out of no way. If you want to hear this story, just ask him. I'm not going to cover it today. God will make a way out of no way if we'll just humble ourselves before him Ask Him into our hearts and ask Him to be our Lord and Savior and He's faithful and just. When we confess our sins, He will forgive us our sins. We're all sinners without Jesus Christ. But because of Jesus Christ, we confess our sins and He's faithful and just, forgives us our sins and we are cleansed. And if you stub your toe along the way and something comes out it shouldn't, ask him to forgive you and he will forgive you again. He loved us that much. Verse 12. He says, And understand they how that he bade them not, excuse me, then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of the bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Man, there's all kind of doctrines going on around here. There's all kind of preaching going around here. You realize that people are preaching Satan, the Antichrist. They're preaching negative Satan worshipers. You think they're going to bring up the Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, or God? No, they're preaching the devil. And every one of them that's going to that church or following that religion or Walking down that road on Judgment Day, they will give an account. And what's he going to say? He'll say, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, for I knew you not. But to the believers that strives to be what we've been called to be, we don't go to the altar and say, Lord, forgive me of all my sins. And he says, Forgive us. As far as the east is from the west. But he says, Go and sin no more. We forget that little old phrase, go and sin no more. Because you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that doesn't give you a seal to get into heaven. It gives you a seal that I'm saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. But when he says go and sin no more, it's life is still a choice. You chose to be here today. It was a choice. How many rolled over two or three times before you made the right choice? Oh, the bed feels so good. Oh, yes, I got some hands up. Yes, I see. I see. It's a choice. It has to be a choice. God's not going to twist your arm. He loves you. It's a choice. Have you chose him as your Lord and Savior? And on Judgment Day, you'd been better off to been not be here today and being at home, be at home than you are to be here. Because on Judgment Day, you say, well, I never heard. Well, did the pastor not tell you that if you was in sin, you was going to hell? If you do not confess your sins, you're going to hell. If you're not accepting me as my, your personal Lord and Savior, you're going to hell. There's only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ and his blood that was shed for us. We will have no excuse. Well, I went to church every Sunday. And do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? And are you following him? And are you doing what you've called him to do? And are you loving your neighbors even though they're unlovable as Christ loved you? 
So many times we think, I'm the only one. Not. We all have to make a choice. He's verse 13. And when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And that's the same questioning question he's asking us today. Who do you say that the Son of Man is? Jesus Christ. Who is he? Who is he to you? Doesn't matter who he is to me. Who is he to you? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? That's as personal as you can get. It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with someone sitting around you. It has nothing to do with family. Who do you say that Jesus is? Who is he to you? Is he the Lord of your life? Is he your Savior? Is he your all in all? Is he the one that you know that if, if this building would collapse right now and each and every one of us would die instantly, do you know where you're going to spend eternity? Do you have the peace that passes all understanding? I know. I'm striving to be what he's called me to be, a witness in a lost world. God loves you. He's prepared a place for you. My mother and father, he prepared a place for them. Our little child who was born, had a, when, when he was born, he died. She died. Candy Sue, she died. We had to put her in the grave. She's going to be there. It's going to be a joyous time. Because first of all, my Lord and Savior is going to meet us first. And the rest of our family will meet again. It's going to be a reunion. How many likes family reunions? Probably not all. Some family reunions are pretty rough, I hear. But some are real good. I love family reunions because we hardly ever see our family. When we get to heaven, we're going to have a great family reunion. And we can tell the stories of what God has done for us. I stand here as a man that was going to go nowhere in life. And people said he'll probably be a janitor his whole life. And that's all he'll ever accomplish, a janitor. God said, not so. Not so. And here I am today sharing the gospel of Christ because I know what God can do. Because he's done it in my life. And so when I look at people and say, well, I'm just a nobody. So was I at one time. Just a nobody. Going to be a janitor. A nobody. But look what God has done. He lives within my heart. Don't look at the man. Look at who lives within my heart. Look at who leads and guides me and directs me on my journey. Looks at the one that chastens me when I get off track and keeps me on that straight and narrow because he loves me. He loves you just as much as he ever loved me. His love is unconditional. He died for each and every one of us. So many times our excuse is, I'm not worthy. If you only knew. Look at some of the disciples and look how they were and what type of people they were. And God used them and turned the world upside down. And he wants to do the same through each and every one of us. If we only understood what the word is telling us, this building would be packed with our families and our friends. And I, as I told you before, I'm not about filling a church up. I'm about seeing lives change for the glory of God. And where they go to church, as long as they're preaching the gospel, I'm happy. 
If it's about filling this church up, what are we going to do then? Build bigger and bigger? No, let them go where God sends them to go. And let's be the seed planters that God has called us to be. Instant, in season, out of season. Do you love him enough that you say, here am I, use me, Lord? And if you do not feel like God's using you, just get down at your knees at the side of your bed and say, Father, forgive me. Give me wisdom and knowledge that I can be what you call me to be. He did not just call us to go to church on Sunday and live like the devil the rest of the week. He called us to come to church on Sunday and go and share the gospel and encourage others. Go and tell a lost world about Jesus. Are you willing to surrender yourself to Him 100%? And I know not a single one of us has arrived, but pray that it will give us wisdom and knowledge to get closer to Him each and every day of our lives because we love Him so much because He first loved us. Shall we all stand? Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we know there's not a single person but on the face of the earth who's worthy other than your Son when he comes to die for us. And I just pray that we will not take this, this what he's done in vain, Lord, but apply it to our lives that we can be what you call us to be, a witness in a lost world. Lord, if we are stumbling along the way and we're swaying along the way and we're not for sure, that's what the altar is for, to come and talk to you. Today is the day of salvation. And you said, put off to tomorrow. Don't put off to tomorrow what you ought to do today. Touch our hearts, touch our minds that we can be the witness. Help us have a peace that passes understand, all understanding with a smile on our face because we know that you have it in control no matter what comes our way. Lord, give us the peace that passes all understanding. And I pray if there's any here this day that does not know you as Lord and Savior, not to put off to tomorrow what we should do today because we're not promised tomorrow. You say it in your word. Lord, touch our hearts, touch our minds, touch our spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.